Hey, today we're going to do something a little bit different from the uh, last few videos of uh, restoring test equipment. We're going to build ourselves an LED light. A friend of mine went to uh, Taiwan, I believe it was, and uh, picked up this old light. Um, it's kind of been dismantled at the moment, but uh, basically you can see it's all yellowed and stuff. But it had these uh, these glass drop things inside which hang down. There's like uh, 18 or something of them all the way around. And they had there's you see the four holes, one, two, three, and four. Had four uh, uh, halogen, just, where are they? Bi-pin halogen globes in there so that the light would shine and refract through these drops and uh, make a nice pattern on whatever. And that's, that's basically why I bought it because it looked pretty cool with all these drops hanging down. Um, so I've been tasked with putting um, LEDs in. So we're going to probably get rid of this whole outer housing because it's going to block the uh, nice fancy LED light and you can see it's all yellowed and gone all a bit blare and then uh, once the LEDs go in all of these drops I've only got one of them on me at the moment because I didn't want to break them uh, they will thread in there and um, hang down and refract our new LED light so the way we're going to build the lights is going to be similar to the way the old setup was see it's got these uh, these posts which hung down inside and then um, the light would shine and do its thing through the glass. So we're going to do a similar thing with the, uh, we're going to use some aluminium. I've already cut some 15 mil by 15 mil aluminium. These are about a hundred and, oh, exactly actually, exactly 140 millimeter long. Got four of those to replace the four LEDs and then all these strips of uh, the NeoPixels WS2812 NeoPixel strips. So they're going to sit on the sides. The uh, strip is a little bit shorter than the, uh, the post, but that's all right because um, we don't mind it being a bit down from the top. That's going to give us a bit of space to, uh, to fix that so it will stick like that and then these are going to be stuck around all on the four sides uh, like so all nice and even like that so they're shining in all directions and then there's going to be four of those so it's going to be about 288 LEDs I believe each one of these has 16 LEDs on it so 288 LEDs which is basically two meters or exactly two meters worth of strip um, and then that's going to go inside, or it's going to be fixed to these four points. The wire's going to come inside and be connected to this module, an SP108E LED Wi-Fi controller. So that's going to be um, sitting in there, controlling the LEDs, and then you use your phone with the Wi-Fi, and it'll, um, it'll let you control what's going on with the sequencing and the colours and all that sort of stuff. And once all these LEDs are shining in all directions, shining through these glass... Uh, baubles, these glass drops hanging down. It should give us a good, um, a good effect. A nice, uh, like a specular kind of speckled light. Um, I've also uh, measured how much that before I cut these up. I measured how much these, uh, how much power these things draw, how much current they draw under full power. That's the brightest they can go, and in uh, white, so it's got that red, green, and blue being fully driven, and um, a two-meter strip will draw 10 amps at 5 volts. So uh, my thoughts so far are, well I'm going to have to uh, stick all these LED strips on, um, but I've got to figure out a way to attach these into here so they stick hanging down like that. And I found um, that these are almost perfectly sized to reuse these standoffs because they will push in, they're like a real tight fit, but I can push those in and that will let me um, reuse these because I can't just use a normal bolt or anything. I was thinking about using some threaded rod, but I can't use just threaded rod without a hole in the middle because there's no way to bring the wires through nice and neat. But if I use these, I can just... Yeah, let's have a look. I'll pull that out. That's the old globe holder there. Now we've got that nice and uh, a hollow. And that will probably press into there after um, putting the vise or something but I'll squish that in and that will let me uh, mount it just nice I wonder if I can there we go like that perfect and then what we've got to do now is uh, put the LEDs on and wire them up so there's one of our sticks done you can see there LEDs all the way around the wires through there so what I've done is um, I've got the uh, green and the red here little thin wires and that's in and out because these are sequenced in in line so you, the way the dressing works is it bounces the uh, signal along 
in a particular order. So the green comes in to there, sequences all the way down, and then once it hits the end, there's a white wire there, which then comes back to the top, and it goes down again, and down again, and down again, four times, and then the red wire comes out, and that can go to the next stick, and then goes four times to the next stick, four times, and so on and so forth. Uh, the power cables are here, tan, brownish colour, and uh, black. I, I was going to use red for the, uh, the, the positive, but um, I didn't have thick stuff. This is uh, the tan and the black are 24 AWG, that's 0.51 millimeter. I've got a uh, four there, so each stick is going to have its own dedicated wire straight back to the uh, power supply to make sure we're not having any voltage drop. So that will then go in like that, screws in there, in the uh, same position as the old uh, halogen little bulbs, and uh, then we connect it up once we've got the other two of these made. So that feeds through. Ta-da! Two mounted. I'll uh, tighten that up in a bit. Once I've got them all in there and I can position them nicely so they shine nicely into the uh, into the glass baubles. Alright, so I've got that all finished. It's all connected up. All, um, well, all assembled anyway. Turns out I could have made a few more and I would have used up all the LEDs, but by not using um, any more than 16 per side. I've got two strips left over, which is kind of good because if any LEDs fail, we can just pull that strip off and replace it with a new strip. So I've got some spares, which turns out all right in the end. Um, they're just bolted on through to here with the original uh, halogen globe mounts we had before. There was tight enough when I pushed them in that they um, I didn't need to put any screws or any rivets in there. That's, uh, yeah, that's not going anywhere. I'd actually had to push real hard to get it in there. So it's just a perfect interference fit. So that worked out well too. So they will be connected to our power supply. Now I was going to use this power supply here. Um, and I thought I, I could chop the end off, like the corners off here. Where there's no traces. And that will just fit in. And it does just fit in. But it's a bit too tight for, for comfort. Um, being mains voltage I want to have a little bit of uh, room and a bit of space to... Uh, to uh, you know, insulate things, and that was just a bit too big. It only cost me two dollars or two hundred yen from Akihabara. It's an Aztec LPS forty-two, and um, these I actually found these on um, on DigiKey, and they cost about twenty or thirty bucks or something. But I'm not going to use that anymore because instead I went and bought this one here. This is a Meanwell brand, also from DigiKey, cost about fifteen bucks. You can see it's less than half the size. This is a 10 amp 5 volt. So it's the same voltage, but 10 amp rather than 11 amp. Still well within the uh, the power draw that we've got. Well, how much power these LEDs use when they're on full at white. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's tiny. It fits in there just nice. Now, Meanwell is one of those Chinese brands that's actually pretty good. Uh, you can see all the slots are cut out. They've got good creepage distance. Um little uh, spark gap thing is just here so that you know ESD and uh, over voltage can spark over and not cause or try not to cause any problems inside we've got nice big common mode choke sitting here and the X class cap there some more chokes and uh, PTCs and on the output we've got another choke low ESR capacitors there we've got a Rubicon cap there and this one big one here is a uh, United Chemicon so it's got yeah all the good parts and um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So that will go in there, and we've got a lot of room you can, yeah, to move things around and put them where they need to go. I've also got the uh, proper connectors too. So I've got the mains connector there, and I've got these little crimps here that go inside. And that will allow our power connection to here, if I can get it lined up, no, to this side. Just like that, wires coming out. And then on the output side, I've got the proper loom here as well. Nice big thick wires. Click. Perfect. So this, this doesn't have two circuits. It might look like it's got two circuits. And this one here might look like it's got three circuits. There's six pins. Three for positive, three for negative. They're actually ganged up. They're um, paralleled. So these two are actually connected together and they act as one wire. And this also acts as one wire. The reason why they do this with the separate wires is so the pins don't get overheated and they don't go over current and um, burn out. So you're spreading it rather than 10 amps through one pin, it's 5 amps through each pin there. 
So I'll just spread that over. So we've got two of these go to one wire, and two of these go to the other wire. They're going to be perfectly balanced, and that will work well, and it will mean I don't have a big, ugly, massive uh, connection. It's just uh, you know, individual wires going out to where they have to go. So that will be good. And um, yeah, that'll sit there just nicely. And then, of course, we've got the controller. And that will sit on the other side somewhere. Somewhere in there. Probably a double-sided tape or something down. But um, this here is, uh, is interesting because it doesn't need the power to come in where it says the power comes in. It says this is your input here, uh, VCC and ground. Uh, we've got a barrel jack if you want to use like a power supply with a like a barrel jack standard DC connector or you can put your bare wires into there and uh, screw them down but it turns out that these two are directly connected together because they can you can use either or and they'll also directly connect across to the uh, VCC in the ground here on the output um, so you can put the voltage in here or in here and it'll work just the same so that means we don't have to have wires come out of both ends I can have the wires just come out one end and the the white in this case, it's the white and red for negative for the white, positive for the uh, the red. They can just connect to these wires as well. And the green is our data, which will then go to each uh, bank of LEDs looping around. And that means that it's just simpler wiring and a bit neater. So they'll just go on and use there. No worries at all. All right. All the electrical is pretty much done. Looking pretty good. We've got the... Uh, the controller here, power supply there, everything's all plug and play, so it's all easy to work on if need be. Um, I put some uh, thousand microfarad capacitors on the five volts where it plugs into the uh, the plugs here underneath the heat shrink, just to give it a bit of decoupling, a bit of a uh, uh, help with the power delivery on sudden uh, transients. Yeah, you know, if you turn it from you know low low intensity to high intensity suddenly, it's gonna just give a bit more of a kick and smooth things off a bit. Just give a bit of a, a hand to the power supply. This is all wrapped in plastic, as you can see, all the way around. Turns out, just the way I built it, it's got three layers of plastic from the uh, PCB to the to the outside. So that's no problems. So we're pretty much ready to turn it on. So let's uh, plug it in, turn it on, and see what it looks like so far. And so there we are. All done. Beautiful. Looking pretty good. Psychedelic, baby. Let's turn the lights off and see what it looks like in the dark. Oh yes. That's good. I could stare at that all day. Nice. So that is a thumbs up. If you can see my thumb, there we go. Thumbs up. Beautiful. Alright, I hope you enjoy that. We'll see you in the next one.